Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and today we are going to be having a look at a puzzle called The Fifth Knight. Um, I'll come to that in a moment. Some upcoming news. Uh, the Indian Sudoku Championship takes place on Sunday and I think the Puzzle Championship the following weekend. Um, I'm sure that you can take part even if you're not Indian. If you are Indian, you you fancy your uh, chances at solving Sudokus quickly, give that a go. If you're not, well, it's going to be a very interesting puzzle pack, effectively, that you can solve against the clock. Um, I might have a go myself if I can make time. Uh, I'll try and remember to put the link on the video uh, in the description field, but if not, just look for Indian Sudoku Championship. I'm sure it'll come up. Now, that goes hand in hand... Well, not hand in hand, that is coming up. What's already existing on our Patreon page is Puzzle Hunts, Jörg van Venedal's Puzzle Hunt, Spy Games, and the brilliant uh, Sudoku Hunt, Tracking the Cryptid by Stefan Bura and Udikos. Still, the answers are pouring in. Every morning I wake up and we've had another five or six um, correct answers to that hunt. So it's proving very popular. It's taking people some time. We are probably going to have a later solution video to that hunt than would be normal because it is it is a you know it is a bit of a time suck, but it's well worth the effort, I believe. Now, in addition to that, I will mention again um, Scott Strosal's advent calendar, which is going on um, at his website. We mentioned it before. Again, just look for Scott Strosal advent calendar. Strosal is spelled S-T-R-O-S-A-H-L. And I'm sure it'll come up. That is obviously in the Christian faith. This puzzle is called The Fifth Night and is from Jessica Shaham and is a celebration of Hanukkah. So happy Hanukkah to those celebrating it. Um, of course, as well as Christianity and Judaism, other religions are available or none, or just doubt. It's up to you. Um, now, <laughs> this puzzle is called the fifth night because five of the eight candles on the menorah are lighted, as well as... Um, what I looked up, and it's apparently called the Shamash, the uh, servant or top candle. Now, what are the rules of the puzzle as a Sudoku? I mean, it's a very vivid image and really impressive in that way. And, you know, I love the, the flame idea here. But what Sudoku rules do we have? We have normal Sudoku rules, clearly. We have each of the digits from 1 to 8 has been shown once in the grid, which is probably a representation of... The number of nights of Hanukkah. Um, now the lit candles form part, and the and the base of the uh, menorah form part of thermo sudokus. So these must increase from the bulb to the end. Um, and down here, where it splits, that means that both these numbers must be bigger than this number, and this one must be bigger than that. Um, and this must be the smallest of all on that thermometer, for instance. Now, the blue lines, on the other hand, are palindromes, so they read the same forwards as backwards, which, in the case of the smallest one, just means that those two digits have to be the same. But on the bigger ones, we must read the same three digits, which could be, for instance, one, two, three, three, two, one. And we also have a few little killer cages also themed around the number eight, um, and obviously in these the cages add up to eight. So that's it. Do give it a go on the link below the video. Um, happy Hanukkah if you're celebrating it and I'm gonna have a try now so let's get cracking. Um, yeah where do we start here? Okay we've got a palindrome with the three on it so we can put the other three there. Then we've got an 8 cage. Now this can't be 5 and 3 because of that 5. Um, so it could be 2 and 6, which would have to be that way around because of this 2, or 7 and 1, which would have to be this way around. I'm sorry the numbers are a little bit hard to read on the backgrounds. Um, I, I think it would be a shame to dilute the visual image to make them better, and I can still see them, so I hope you can. Now... 
Oh, okay, that's on the palindrome. So this is one or six, and this is two or seven as well. That's clear. Now we've got some ordinary Sudoku thanks to those threes. One of these must be a three, and the reason I'm finding that interesting is because one of them must sit on a thermo. So the number before it on a thermo, which can't be one, must be two. So that must be up there somewhere. Indeed, oh, and that feeds across and fixes this eight cage straight away. Okay, I was going to make a general remark about um, how all of these thermos are probably going to be most of the small numbers, but let's not deal with that yet because they don't have to be. So that's given us a, an eight cage here. Now this eight cage can't be one seven anymore. It could be three five that way round, or it could be two six either way round. The twos in this box mean that this eight cage must be made up of odd digits. That doesn't resolve anything. Um, One there, one there. Aha! There's a one here. And we know that if one is on a thermo, it can only be on the bulb. So it can't be on a thermo in this box. Um, and that doesn't do much else. Right, this, yes, one there and one there. This can't be a one because it has to be the same as this cell on the palindrome. Oh, but the other one can be. The bulb of a thermometer clearly can be a one. Now, this cage can't be one seven anymore. Again, it could be three five one way round. Ah, oh, it's on a thermo, so if it was two six, it would clearly be that way round as well. So we get a five or six there and a two or three there. That means this is one or two. Quite likely it's going to be the one, but likely is not enough. Now, this can't be 5, 3 because of that 5. So it's 2, 6 or 1, 7. Okay, we're probably going to have to do more work with the thermos now, I would imagine. Oh no, let's have another think about that thought. That these candles have higher numbers on the thermos. So none of them can be 9. That could just be 8 with a 9 there, but 9 must be over here in one of these cells. Therefore, one of the opposite ends of those palindromes must be a 9. Either that one or that one must have a 9 on the other end. And that's a weird pencil mark arrangement now that I don't know quite what to do with. Um... Yeah, that doesn't, I mean, it rules nine out of that cell, which is the same as that cell, which doesn't really. Oh my gosh, actually, that almost does help. Because the question about where nine can be in this row, nine is now ruled out of there because of this reason, that it can't, one of those two is a nine. And that means that this cell can't be a nine. And this is on the palindrome the same as this. So this can't be a 9. And therefore, the 9 in the middle row, which cannot be now any of these cells, it also... Oh, it could be that cell. Sorry, I was about to say it must be in box 5, but actually it could be on the end of that palindrome. Okay. Sorry, I was getting all excited about something there that was pointless. Okay, I'm going to mark... Because I've learnt this about this cell, I'm going to mark in 4, 6 and 8 as possible on that cell of the palindrome. Right, now I was going to go back and think a bit more about these thermos. Okay, this, I mean, it's, there's only two, I suppose there are three, actually, four cell thermos in the grid. But this one is quite restrained because one, four, six appear at the top, in the top box. So that could be two, three or five. This could be 3, 5, or 7. This can unfortunately be... Or it can't be 7 anymore because that's in the box. That's quite... In oh, this can't be 7 because that's a 7. Sorry, that's a bad miss. Right, and that means this one 
can't be as big as five because it has to be smaller than that. Now we've got a two, three pair in the column. That's really nice. That makes this a five. This now has to be higher than five. This has to be higher than six. And we're really limiting these options quite significantly. Now, if that's a five, I'm very tempted to think these are two, three, four, and six, but this can be eight, of course. Right, let's just do some ordinary Sudoku. Three, one, seven. Four must be in one of these cells. Ah, that is quite interesting because it means four is now on this palindrome. Actually, I should have spotted when I was pencil marking four in there that it was not possible because of that four, didn't spot that. So those are six or eight. And they're both seeing this cell. Did I look at that before? Seven, seven, one, three, two, six, eight, four. That is five or nine. And it's the same as this, which can't be a five. So this must be a nine. This is a weird naked single, I think. Three, one, seven in the box, four in the column. Six and eight. Oh, no, they're not necessarily a pair here. They're the same digit. OK, check that. Stop getting excited. OK, but it can't. Let's let's look at it again. Two in the row, four in the column, three, one, seven in the box. So it's five, six, eight or nine. It can't be five because it has to be the same as that, which can't be five. Ah, so it's uh, six, eight or nine. And that forms a triple in the box and in the row. Two, three, six, eight, nine, one. So these are from four, five, and seven. This one can't be seven, clearly. Um, what's that telling? Six, eight, nine, triple. So these are from two, four, and five. Well, this can't be two because that would have to be one, and one is there. So we can put in the two. This is a four or five. Let's take out the corner marks. Um, right, this is four or five. This has to be smaller than five. It can't be one, two, or four. It is three. Um, ah, look, these can't be four because that can't be four and that can't be four. So four in row three is somewhere in on the candles. And the other number is either six or eight. OK, can we use? Yeah, we can use that here, surely. The two must have a three higher than it. The four Can we conclude none of these can be four? Yes, we can, because I don't know if that actually helps much. But if we can, because a four would need a two up here as well, and the three already needs the two up there. So that's not possible. This can't be a four. I, what's that telling me? Oh, never mind what that's telling me. I've just spotted I put in a three here, and that's sorted out my two, three pair. Um, oh, that doesn't do much else. It does put four here because four can no longer be up here or it would need a number between three and four. And here comes a big knowledge bomb from Cracking the Cryptic. You can't have three and a half in a cell. Now, this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or nine. I have a feeling it can't be nine, but I can't quite see why. Um, this is 7, 8, or 9. That's all it can be. In fact, this is a trio of 7, 8, and 9. And this one can't be the 7. Oh, this is coming now. Come on, keep going. What can this be? Yes, that's an interesting question. It's got to be the same as this. So this one sees three, four, seven, and six. This one sees one, five, and two. This is either eight or nine. And that forms a pair with that one. 
and makes a one two pair at the bottom. So I'm going to remove the pencil mark. Now that one two pair, is that not helpful? I don't think it is. Oh, irritating. Okay. Um, oh, look, seven, seven. That can't be seven because of that. Bit of regular Sudoku sometimes does come in handy. Now, seven, we knew that had to be there. I could have done that seven any number of ways and didn't. Um, this can't be five. This can't be five. The reason that can't be five is because it would need there to be a five here, which is not possible. So five is now on one of those cells. These central palindrome cells are very useless because they don't go anywhere else. Um, Ah, that's not telling me anything. Five being there. Two, one, three, nine. So eight, nine. This is six, seven, eight, or nine. Right. That's actually now six, eight, or nine, because it can't be seven because of that seven we did put in. That was actually very helpful. And now, because it gives us a six, eight, nine triple on the end of the palindrome. And that makes this, for instance, five, puts a seven here. We are off and running at this point. 725. We've got all these 689 triples all over the place. Ah, 689 triple. That fixes the identity of this cage. 7 there means there... And there's definitely a 7 in one of those cells. So the 7 in column 9 has to actually be here. It can't be here because that would be too big for that position. Anyway, that gets rid of 7 and 1 out of there. That gets rid of 3 and 5 out of there. And suddenly we know the identities of every cell, every cage anyway. 3, 5, 7, 2, 4. Still don't quite know what this is. Um, 1 up here is in one of these cells. Ah, that puts a one in the corner, the top corner of the grid. Don't think there's anything wrong with putting one in the corner. Um, seven, eight, right. Five is in one of those. Three, don't know. Four must be down here. Ah, that is interesting. Four is in one of those cells. Now, that means these can't be four. And we worked out earlier these can't be four because there can only be one, two in these three candles. Therefore, four is in one of these two cells with seven. So that's a four, seven pair. And that is going to fix a lot of things, not just because it fixes that five, four pair, but also because it means one of these is a four. And that means that on the thermos, one of these must be the three. This can't be the three anymore, perhaps unsurprisingly. This can't be the two. Um, indeed, one of them's the four and one of them's the seven. One, seven, two, four. So these must come from three, five and six. Yes. The numbers smaller than whichever two of three, five, and six those are must be two and four because one, five, three have been taken up here. So two and four have to be on these two candles. This one is not a four. It is six, eight, or nine. It clearly can't be nine because of the thermo. This is eight or nine. It can't be seven because of that one. And, yes, we can go further. Oh, that's very lovely. If this was the 4 here, so then this would be 7, that would mean this would have to be 4, and it would clash with that 4. So we know which way round these go. These two candles, that's 2, 3, 4. That's 4. Let's get rid of 3 from there. And this is 7. And that is sorting out lots of things. Seven and one there, three and five up there. That fixes one there. 
Um, get, this is a nine now, that's a naked single. Five, two, three, seven, one, eight in the columns, six in the row, four in the box. That's an eight. This is sorting out our nines and eights, which I thought might give us quite a lot of pause, actually. That fixes this six on the palindrome. That means this is not six. Six in the row. No, actually five in the row must be here. That's probably been available as a conclusion for a while. Now we've got an eight, nine pair. Six in the row is there. Um, okay, that's not six as well. Again, eight, nine pairs, but we've got some eights and nines at the top to fix those. Yes, that's on the palindrome, which is very helpful. The whole of the palindromes and the menor menorahs are now entirely fixed, I believe. And we are coming, therefore, to a conclusion. I suppose not that cell, but that was never going to be very helpful. Uh, this must be a nine because of the palindrome. That's giving us a two. Yes, we can resolve the six two pair. I thought we couldn't for a moment. Never mind about 485 there. Right, we've got 369 coming down here. So 5 is there, 2 and 4. That fixes the 1. That fixes this 1. Um, 6, 8 and 9. Actually, I don't know those. Let's do that cage. Then we can put six in column one, it has to be there. That fixes the nine, six pair. Now we've got eight and nine to put in here. We can do them now. Three, four and two, four, five and eight here. We must be able to do them starting with eight, yes. And one trio left to finish at the top. Three, four, five in exactly that order. And there we are, a really nice puzzle from Jessica. Um, that's a very good celebration, um, I hope not sacrilegious in any way. And as I say, congratulations to anyone celebrating the holidays at the moment, um, be they of whatever faith. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Happy Hanukkah.